Is the film in black and white because apparently that's the only way Fincher views the world now? Welcome to Real School, the film theorist that doesn't just study Orson Welles, I live the Wellesian lifestyle. Ah, the Real School, often celebrated for its excellence. I am your host, Paul Mas uh, Michael Wynn Johnson, and today I'll be reviewing Mank. As you're watching the video, if you like what you see, be sure to give it a like or subscribe if you haven't done so already. It's been six years since we got a Finch film, and granted, he's been working on yet another amazing television project that fans fall instantly in love with, only to be slapped upside the head with disappointment for some reason. Either way, something dark and twisted got cancelled. Now if you've been on Twitter, why, or YouTube, hello, you've probably seen that Mank is quite polarizing, that people either love it or hate it, and I have to preface that that last film six years ago was Gone Girl, which still stands as my favorite Fincher film, which is really saying something considering the iconic films that this guy has made. And I say that to preface where I'm coming from. Expectations could not have been higher with me personally. I think it's also important to preface the amazing writers that Fincher has teamed up with. Jim Oles, Andrew Kevin Walker, Gillian Flynn on the aforementioned Gone Girl, Aaron Sorkin. Writers who know their craft and know the story inside and out. And let's not forget the man who wrote Alien 3, because everyone else has. And with Mank, Fincher teams up with yet another writer who he has a tight-knit relationship with, his late father, Jack. And Jack clearly wrote a story that not only does he know inside and out, but yet another story that is densely layered. A lot of you may be thinking, don't we already know this story inside and out? Because haven't we done Citizen Kane to death? Film nerds and film students at least should have studied Citizen Kane to death. From what I hear, the next generation of film students doesn't really study it anymore. And that's a little baffling, but understandable. You kind of have to move on. But the fact of the matter is, we've had dozens of films about the making of Citizen Kane. Now granted, this isn't about Orson Welles. This is about Herman Mankiewicz, the man who wrote Kane. So in a sense, you have to kind of treat Mank like the next generation of Spider-Man. We probably don't need it, we're gonna get it anyway, and we just hope that this iteration is more charming than the last one. And I personally really felt that Mank was charming. It could have been just another historical making of drama, but there was so much more. First off, the storyline of Mank, that of Mank actually writing Citizen Kane, is not really the storyline. It's the premise, granted, but there's way more to this script. I was actually pleasantly surprised by the topical political parallels in this movie. I didn't expect it. I thought it would just be kind of a making of drama. Mank has subplots about how rich white Americans influence elections and even the Hollywood machine and celebrities pushing their propaganda. Nothing relatable for modern audiences there. I was also pleasantly surprised by the format of the film. The Finchers really got creative in what could have been just a straightforward biopic. Making the movie a living screenplay, I felt not only gave it some life, gave it an homage to Jack, but at the same time broke up the story and made it more understandable. A love letter to screenwriting, certainly, but the homages get even more specific from there. One of my favorite eras in film is that of the early 40s when Citizen Kane came out. There's something charming about filmmakers like Preston Sturges, Frank Capra, and Billy Wilder. There's this crazy quick fire dialogue that overlaps one another, and even though they're talking about something horrible, you still can't help but listen and smile. Kind of like people on YouTube. There is a dinner party scene in this film that is so densely layered and delivered at such a quick pace. It's so much fun to watch. It's encapsulating. It's kind of like Tarantino wrote a David Fincher political drama. But a screenplay is just words on a page if the actors who are delivering it don't get it, if they can't bring it to life. Now, granted, from what I read, if they didn't get it, Fincher would make them film it 200 times, but there isn't a weak link in this cast, and that's really saying something these days. Every actor in this film knows exactly what they need to do for the story. They know their role. Amanda Seyfried, Charles Dance, Tom Pelfrey, Lily Collins. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I've been waiting for that moment for all my life. Now my favorite performance of the film may actually surprise you because it's not Gary Oldman. It's basically a walk-on role. Tom Burke. The Brit who would eventually play the greatest American filmmaker did an absolutely uncanny Orson Welles. And I grew up loving Orson Welles. I literally mean grew up. When I was a kid, I liked Orson Welles. I don't know, go figure. Maybe it was Transformers. But that iconic voice, that presence, Burke captured that 
brilliantly and I did not expect that and that makes it the for the win. Some of you are thinking, how can you praise a film where the title character isn't even your favorite part? Because it's not about that. What this film did differently, what it could have done easily, that other biopics have done, that other making of Citizen Kane fictional films have done, is it didn't truly vilify anybody. Now granted, nobody in this movie is really likable, but nobody is really 100% the villain. There are people who do twisted and dark things. Again, Fincher's used to working with people like that, but the fact is, it's not about that. It's about what we do in order to create, if you're a creative person, what we do to the people we love, our friends, and the people we trust. What we do to gain that trust and ultimately sometimes betray it. Now, Herman Mankiewicz was a human who wrote one of the greatest character studies of all time. Jack Fincher wrote a character-driven drama that is a study of humanity. They're intrinsically linked, and I realized that some people didn't see that link, but for me, the film was just so surprising and so layered that it's definitely an earn it. I understand it's a bit of a niche film. I understand, speaking of black and white, it may be polarizing, but I think the people who didn't connect to this film are overlooking the parts that a lot of people can connect to. Poll question, what's your favorite black and white film? As always, leave your answers in the comments section below. But until next time, school's out. Hey Real Students, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to Real School, click that round Real School logo right beside me. Also click that damn notification bell so you're aware of all of Real School's new content. You can follow me on Twitter and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link in the description below or the button down there and you can become part of my Patreon team.